Hi everyone, I'm Chad Shoup, and welcome to our latest Bank It or Tank It. Today we're going to be covering popular automobile manufacturer Ford. Now they've been around what feels like forever, but they've been doing a lot of things recently to transition to really meet up with the EV demand that we're seeing. They're coming out with a new a Bronco, they have the new F-150 series, it's going to be electric, and a Mustang Mach-E, which is actually an SUV, so it's not their typical muscle car. It's going to be a a mid-size SUV or even a small size. I don't even know where it would be classified, but it looks like a small SUV and that's going to help it compete against the one and only Tesla that's out there dominating the electric vehicle space. But there's all this competition that's coming up. So today we're going to dive into Ford and see what all that means for the stock and what you can expect on a company here over the next few months. And before I get started, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who left me a comment on my last quick takes video with several stocks for me to take a look at. So I'll be sure I wanted to feature those all in an upcoming video on our next quick takes. We'll run through all those companies. We'll break down the charts and I'll just give you my quick take. And then from there, if there's any stocks that you want me to continue to feature in a full on bank it or take it like we're doing today for Ford, just keep leaving the stock in the comment section and I'll add it to my list and I'll be sure to bring it up and do a full bank it or take it on a stock here in the coming weeks. Now, before we get started, I just want to take a moment, let everybody who hasn't yet go ahead and click subscribe so that we don't miss out on any of my upcoming YouTube videos, my stock market insights, these bank it or tickets, or any other content that I post. Just click subscribe so that way you don't miss out on anything. And be sure to keep those comments coming. Even if you didn't leave a comment last week or have never left one before, I encourage you to let me know what stocks you're looking at, what stocks are on your radar, so that way I can feature them in an upcoming video where I can give you my take on what I think about these companies. So with Ford today, the stock actually came up as an internal discussion between me and some of my colleagues where one of them actually doubled their money recently on Ford, not on trading options, but just on buying the stock after the pandemic, seeing the massive rally. Now Ford's at another critical level based on our price chart. So we're going to get to that today. But first, let's focus on the key stats. I always like to start with the total revenues in net income growth that we're seeing here over the last few years and what's expected. So on this chart, we have the net income. The key for that's on the left-hand side, and it's the line on the chart. Then we have total revenues. It's the blue bars, and the key for that's on the right-hand side. Now you can see the V recovery here on the line on the chart. It's a the net income shows a sharp drop. So we can see that they were struggling heading into the pandemic, 2018, 19, and 2020. All had sales going lower. Then coming out of the pandemic, their net income is expected to improve drastically. You can see the expectations. For, well, the full 12 months in 2021 is a nice jump back up to highs that they haven't seen since 2018. And then in 2022, 2023, just a steady climb there for the bottom line of the company. And what I like to see is if total revenues really match this net income growth that they're trying to achieve. And we see it somewhat, but it's definitely a lot slower. And part of that is what we can talk about today is that their total revenue is not going to snap back right away. Now they're moving inventory because they have a semiconductor shortage. They're not able to produce new cars yet, even though they're said to be rolling out the new F-150 series. Some of those trucks, which is their most popular lineup, that'll be hitting dealerships later this year. That way they'll be able to have a nice run up in sales before they finish all of 2021. But for now, they're still waiting to get some of these earnings. They just posted earnings results. They were down 26% on revenue for the quarter from a year ago, and that was when the pandemic was hit. So you can see that they're not expecting revenue to come back here in 2021, but then we see a full year jump of 20% almost here from 2021 to 2022, and then they get back to multi-year highs on revenues in 2023 based on these expectations. And again, this is in line though with the chip shortage we're facing, with the strong demand that they're seeing for automobiles as Ford's been moving all their inventory that's been sitting. Now they're able to roll out new lineups here at the end of the year and going into next year that'll be able to meet some of that demand and continue to spark an interest here from consumers. I mean, they're electrifying many of their popular lineups with the Mustang, even though it's an SUV, they're still carrying the name and it's looking super sporty. And then their F-150 series is going to have an electric pickup. And then the Bronco is expected to be electric as well. So these are some of their three top performing lines that they're transitioning to the electric vehicle space here in the next years. So that's really going to help them build robust sales. And even though this is a big jump here in revenues from 2021, which is still dealing with the pandemic and the semiconductor shortages and all these other issues into 2022 and 2023, I like the storyline that's building up for Ford, at least for them just to meet these expectations. But now let's take a look at some quick comps and see how Ford stacks up against the competition. So we have some of the automobile giants in here, General Motors, Tesla, which has taken over, but we also have Honda, 
Daimler, which is Chrysler, Volkswagen, Toyota, and a few of these other uh, brands that produce automobiles as well. But you can see just on market cap, Ford Motor Company near at the bottom is a 59 billion market cap company. Tesla, $654 billion market cap. So that one car company is just massive where they have grown to. And it really throws off the market cap average down there at the bottom for sure. Because when you look at the other companies, only Volkswagen and Toyota are above 100 billion. The rest are under 100 billion. And Ford is kind of in the middle of that pack. So it's really an average size car company at this point. And then when we look at the total revenue growth over the last three years, we saw that Ford's was going down. So they're showing a 6.8% loss. You look at the rest of the companies, pretty much all of them, except for BMW and Tesla, showed a loss, but BMW, just a 1.9% gain, so very small. And then Tesla, 42% here over the last three years, which you can see traditional automobile retailers are absolutely struggling during this time. So this is why when you look at Tesla's price chart, when you look at that market cap, nothing adds up when you look at it right now. But when you see the growth and the path, that Tesla is on compared to the rest of the industry. I mean, they're light years ahead of these companies and all Ford can do is just try to keep up. You know, as I mentioned, they're rebranding their three top lines here to compete against the Teslas of the world in the electric vehicles. So they're trying to create that offer and create this demand. But at the end of the day, they got to grow sales. So we got to see those sales turn around, continue to help lift the bottom line. Because when we look at the net income also, we saw that V dip for net income for Ford before the expectations to come back up, a 20% drop. And the average for the rest of these companies that have net income to track, meaning that they're not sh showing losses at the moment, are an average of a 6% loss. So it just goes to show that the car company industry, they have been struggling, not just during the pandemic, they were struggling heading into the pandemic. And that just created even more problems for them. But it's actually clearing the way now for growth as we come out of this pandemic, dealing with the chip shortage. And now they're right in line to just continue to benefit from the growing demand for electric vehicles, as well as just general automobiles. I've been just flying off the shelves lately. So Ford is in a good position to kind of be in a snapback rally, but so are the rest of these companies. So let's now let's break down a little bit of the investor sentiment to see what they like about Ford. And we're comparing it against the same companies. So when we look at the price to earnings ratio, the first column, Again, a few of these companies, they didn't, they don't have positive earnings at the last quarter, so they don't show up. But Ford at 15 times earnings, they're actually the most expensive stock on this list. So that's a pretty big deal because when you look at price to earnings, it's what investors are willing to pay per dollar of earnings. And right now, investors are willing to give Ford, which when we look at the price chart, you'll see the rally that they've been on, has been on a tear running higher, and they're still willing to give $15 per share on this stock that they'll pay up for. Now the average just 9.7. So, I mean, if you do the math, that's a roughly 30% price hike to get Ford compared to the rest of these companies, even like a General Motors. They're just at 9.5 times earnings. So Ford is definitely leading this industry as, as far as what investors like, how they're interested in, in investing into these different companies. They like Ford a lot. When you look at short interest, not many of these companies have a short interest reading because they're foreign listed shares, but General Motors and Tesla, have 1.4% short interest, Tesla 4.1%, nothing too insane. We know Tesla has a lot of shorts that just love to continuously ride this company on a short side, even though they've just been getting obliterated here over the last few years. They're still 4.1% of the shares outstanding being sold short. And for Ford, 1.8%. This is just all pretty much in line, nothing alarming. If we saw this of 10% or higher, then you would start to be a little concerned about if the investors are just seeing the headwinds that are going to be hitting the company and they're already loading up on the short side. But for now, there's no alarms going off based on a short interest. Then the average broker recommendation tells us where the analysts have it rated. So one is a strong buy, five is a strong sell, Ford is sitting right in the middle, 2.35. So they're really listed as a hold. The average for the industry is an outperform at two. Now, these are probably some of the companies that maybe haven't shot up as quite as high. So General Motors, a pretty strong buy there. Honda, Daimler, and Volkswagen all have pretty strong buys. But then when we looked at like Tesla, which we know has done phenomenal, is seeing the strong growth. It's kind of giving you every reason to be bullish on the stock. They're listed as a hold based on the average broker recommendation. And that, again, has a lot to do with the momentum that the stock has seen, the actual stock, not the company, not the revenues. 
they're looking at the stock price and saying that it's a hold because it got overheated. And I think we have a similar thing going on with Ford. Now let's turn to the price chart, which is my favorite part, where we get to break down what the price action is telling us about Ford. The thing we're going to look at here is the shaded bars that I like to add to these charts. It's based on a relative rotation graph, which really just tells us where the stock is sitting at relative to the S&P 500. And it, there's basically got four cycles that it goes through, and that's leading the market, which is green. Then it starts to weaken, so it turns yellow as it starts to slow down, and then it eventually lags the market, which you can see the last one over here is red, so it just entered lagging. And then after that, it goes back into improving, and then to leading, weakening, lagging, and then basically it goes through this cycle over and over again through, through the market. And what's interesting now is that we saw the sharp pullback and then it kind of leveled off. It was weakening, lagging, and we're not seeing much more bearish momentum build up in the stock. So that's great to see. And really what this stock is forming here is gonna look either like a flag or a pennant pattern here as we draw some support lines in across the stock. And it's because we had that strong rally higher, we have this big move, and this is just looking back over the last couple of months. Big move higher. And then we get this little period of consolidation. Now we'll draw this very tight for the moment, but we want to see it break out of these key lines. And basically this support is the main one we're watching because if we want to stay bullish on a stock, you want it to hold a key level of support. In other words, these are great lines in the sand to use, but just because it blows below this support does not mean it's heading sharply lower just yet because there's a few different areas here that you can draw trend lines and even a horizontal line across the support bottom here could act as support. So not all hope is lost if these lines don't hold, but for now, this is what you wanna watch. We wanna see a breakout. Again, it's basically a little pennant pattern. You got this sharp rally higher, then this consolidation. Now, as it goes from leading to improving, you can look for it to head higher or break out to the downside and head lower. But that's the key chart to watch here, especially in the short term. Now, I wanted to zoom out and just show you what we were talking about here with my colleagues you can see the massive rally, over 250% that stock has been on after it came out of the abyss here from the pandemic. March 2020 was the lows, then it just shot up from there. Great opportunities, you can, we know this on all the stocks basically throughout the stock market, have continued on the new highs, gone even higher. They were great buying opportunities. But in Ford, now, is the, the question is now is it still a buy? And when we zoom out, you can see that this kind of high teen range for the price, 16, 17, 18. Once it hits this area for years, I mean, for decades, this has been a resistance area. It hasn't got above $20 a share since back in the 2000s when it broke above it and was part of the dot-com bubble running higher. So since that, once we started coming down from that, we haven't been able to break back above $20 a share. So now you can see that we had this long downtrend channel that the stock was stuck in for years heading up to 2019. And the pandemic actually broke it to the downside. Broke it to the downside. That was a bearish move. Then it bounced back up, basically still in line with this channel all the way up to, what, about November of last year. Then we finally started to get the breakout. So that was a real sign of a breakout, ending a multi-year downtrend for the stock. And we'll just draw some quick trend lines just to highlight this downtrend that I'm talking about in case you're not catching on what I'm talking about. That's basically the little funnel that this stock was stuck in. Clear downtrend. You know, you can you can eyeball that and see it on a chart. Now we're in an uptrend, and now we're fighting to really get above these mid-teens that have just hit it as resistance for so long. And I'm a fan of Ford. I'm a fan of what they're trying to do, competing on electric vehicles, the demand struggles that they've had. And I think that this is going to be a great opportunity for the company to actually get back up there, to get back up into these high teens, $17, $18, and hold it for a little bit of a time as it creates some consolidation for the stock before we get a breakout. So again, we've had this big rally. Now we got this little pennant up here at the top and we never want to use the top of the chart as a key resistance point. So I'm gonna adjust those axis to make it zoom out a little bit, draw a horizontal line here, just across $20 a share, just to show you where that is. This is the ceiling I think for the stock, at least in the short term. We're in this bullish pattern right now. And that's Since this is a bullish pattern, since Ford's going through a lot of changes, and because they got basically a V bottom on the net income expectations, a big turnaround for revenues, which we know is coming. We know there's a lot of pent up demand from consumers and the way they're rolling out their electric vehicle lineups. It's going to be really sweet. I think a lot of consumers are going to flock to them. I think they're going to see a nice bounce higher from here and they're going to break out to the upside. That's going to give them a push back into these teens. 
Now, I think that they're going to stay in these teams for quite some time, but we can hit $20 a share here over the next several months, no problem. So that's given us a, a rally of about 30, 33%. That we can look at on as a price target for Ford. And then depending on how that consolidation, how this breakout, how this price ranges through this area, we'll be sure to take another look at the stock down the road to figure out if it can get above $20 and hold. But for now, based on everything that we talked about today, this stock is on my bank it list. And that's one that you want on your radar to look for that 30% move to the upside. Again, they just had earnings not too long ago. They were struggling. They had chip shortages, a bunch of issues coming up for the stock. But all that's getting put behind them. And they're going to be off to the races here in the coming weeks. So this is a stock to keep an eye on. So that's all for my video today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this as we broke down forward. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that we don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. I'll be sure to pull together a quick takes here in the next few weeks. That's going to break down all the stocks that you all mentioned on my last video from the other week. So leave me comments with stocks you want me to feature in an upcoming video. Just right below the video, leave me a comment. And if you enjoyed the content, just click the like button to let me know. Until next time, I'm Chad Shoot.